Okay, just give me a minute and see where I can put on my earpiece. Hello guys. Okay, uh, just give me a minute. <laughs> I mean, a very nice, uh, uh, in a very nice uh, environment, okay? Let me see if I can put on my earpiece in time. Okay, hello everybody. Okay, I'm gonna put on my earpiece uh, so that y'all can hear me. I forgot to put on my earpiece. Okay, hold on. All right, okay. Hello everybody, okay just give me a minute, I'm gonna put on my earpiece, just give me a minute, okay? Just give me a minute. Alright guys, can you hear me loud and clear? Sound check everybody. Sound check, okay? I'm actually by a very nice uh, countryside here, if you can see. Okay, yep. Oh, dinner time now, I'm sorry, huh? This uh, is dinner time for you, but it's... Uh, <laughs> This is the only time I have, so I've got to catch uh, the only time I have, if you don't mind. Okay, where am I? Uh? Look at this, okay. I'm in a very nice uh, shopping outlet uh, by the Woods. Uh, this place is called The Mall at Florence. Some of you all might have been here before, okay. Uh, but I guess I don't want to shake too much uh, so as to not cause, not cause a motion sickness to many of you guys. Can we do a sound check loud and clear, everybody? And the visuals are good. I think the internet here is quite good now. Okay, my only fear I have right now is that uh, I'm walking by the road. <laughs> so uh, the other one is that there, there is a thunder sounding uh, in the sky and things like that. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, all good. Okay, all good. Yep. Well, in this video, my hair looks very nice. Okay, <laughs> I hope my hair is as good uh, in... Uh, uh, it's still growing now. Okay. All right, good. Today, the topic is actually very serious, okay, very serious because I know many of you, okay, many of you have bought a lot of US stocks and if it is true that all the news are coming out in the recent days, then we have a serious problem, you know. So what is happening is that there's a lot of news recently that's going on that China has signed a lot of deals with Russia, with Brazil, with Saudi Arabia, and a few countries, that they will now abandon the US dollar and start trading in the Chinese Yuan, okay? Now, if this is so, okay, and there are a lot of Western media right now saying, oh no, now is the end of the world, you know, for US dollar. The US dominance of, uh, dominance of their US dollar is over, okay, is over. And that also means that a lot of our US uh, assets, you know, your S&P 500, your NASDAQ, everything uh, that is priced in US dollar is going to crash even if the value were to stay. So that is very serious, right? That is very, very, very serious, okay? So, well, there's a lot of cars, okay? So, so if that is true, hello everybody, good to see you, good evening and happy Sunday. So if this is true, then, uh, then we have a very serious uh, investment problem. So... So today I thought it's very important for me to talk about this topic. So last uh, two days I've been analyzing this uh, question. I've uh, made a few phone calls. I made a few phone calls and uh, I made a few phone calls and and did a lot of research. I've also watched a lot of. Usually I watch Western media because this uh, economic stuff uh, in the Western media uh, a lot. But this time around I watch a lot of Chinese. Uh, uh, economists and uh, and read a lot of Chinese economists uh, literature and all this, right? So I have a balanced view, okay? So the backdrop of this is that China right now has signed a lot of bilateral agreements that they will now abandon the US dollar and only deal bilaterally with Saudi Arabia, we call it petrol dollars, now in petrol yuan, okay? And uh, we have got um, them signing with Brazil, with Russia, and they all trade in Chinese uh, in Chinese yuan instead of the US dollar. Uh, the details are not out, okay? It's just high level uh, high level agreement right now, and but the direction is clear, right? These country uh, these countries uh, towards uh, trade with, uh, with China will abandon. But I get struck by lightning. Uh. Okay, we'll abandon the US dollar, okay? We'll abandon the US do dollar to, to yuan, okay? So, 
uh, I've analyzed quite a lot of it. The Western media and the Western uh, Western finance media seems to interpret this as some death and end of the world and things like that. So there's and then something that is a non-event and things like that. Uh, the Chinese uh, the Chinese media and the Chinese economists uh, actually put a more balanced picture. So luckily, I can understand Chinese. Uh, and by actually, by right, by 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 right, um, uh, the Western media, unfortunately, Ang Mo don't quite understand uh, the Chinese position. So there are a lot of misunderstanding uh, uh, and things like that. So so, but but it's a very interesting uh, environment. Uh, for some of you who don't know, I actually mix a lot with China Chinese. Uh. My best friend in university. Um, for many years, I mixed with China Chinese. So I was talking Chinese is a very standard Chinese. So I, I, basically, can go to China. Uh, people don't even know I'm from Singapore. Because I talk Chinese is a Chinese accent. So if you understand uh, Chinese, uh, basically what I say is that uh, my Chinese is actually uh, pretty, pretty good. Okay, uh, Chinese, China Chinese accent. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, talk about what exactly uh, is happening. Uh, I've got a very, uh, I've got very good notes uh, all put up. Uh, okay, so number one is that how did US dollar first become the world reserve currency? World reserve currency means that everybody's hey, nobody give a like. Apaini, okay, please give a like. So how did US dollar become first become the world's current reserve currency? So to be a world reserve currency, you know, a lot of things must. Uh, must, must come into play. But first of all, uh, in the 1940s, uh, after World War II, they set up a system, uh, they, there was a series of events leading up to it, but basically the world moved towards a gold parity system. Thank you. The gold parity system means that every country in the world will pack to US dollar and US dollar will pack to gold. So this is called a gold parity system. Uh, somewhere around the 1970s, if I remember my economics history well, the US dollar moved away from the, the gold pack, but the whole world already got used to the US dollar uh, as the world reserve currency. And as a result, uh, as a result, they, they actually, uh, you know, um, uh, continue the US dollar uh, denominated uh, trade. Uh, all these have serious implications, uh, you know, as we go, because now, Basically, the US dollar is the strongest uh, currency in the world um, and it's also enabled US to, to do a lot of things, you know. US can literally print their, print their problem away. You know, they run into problem, they print their money, they, are, they print and then the problem goes away, right? And when they print money, what happens? They export <laughs> their problem globally. Right now, one plate of chicken rice uh, in Singapore, one plate of chai peng in Singapore is very expensive. Why? Because US were printing money like crazy and they export their problem out to the world, rest of the world. So, so uh, anyway, um, I, I think I have to, after analyzing and watching the media, I'm going to say a few things, okay? Um, number one is, I think two possibilities will happen. The first poss possibility is that there is a possibility that the Chinese renminbi or Chinese yuan will become, there are talks of it, eventually become a world reserve currency. Okay? World reserve currency and, and basically the US dollar will be replaced. Uh, or the Chinese yuan will become like uh, the euro or will become like a euro which, which is not a world reserve currency but is highly used by the world. Uh, so there are these, these possibilities, uh, they are in talks, okay? Uh, and of course, uh, you know what? <laughs> Let me tell you, okay? The Chinese pro-Chinese economists, the pro-Chinese media basically says this, okay? Not in their lifetime will that happen. Not in their lifetime will that happen, okay? They say, uh, you understand this phrase? Is it won't happen uh, out of your freaking mind. So therefore, we first have to understand why the hell did China sign all these agreements, move away from US dollar, right? So, so I think we first need to understand why. 
that all this uh, this this thing won't have uh, this uh, so called the death of the US dollar, the collapse of the US dollar, the end of the US dollar, you know, won't happen now. Uh, okay, won't happen. Okay. Whoa, that's a huge mega bus. Okay. Now, the first thing uh, everybody need to know is that. Do you know who, who holds a hell of U.S. treasury? Which country holds one of the most U.S. treasury? It is China. China holds a lot of U.S. treasury. So these are all denominated, denominated in, in uh, U.S. dollar. And if the U.S. dollar were to collapse, who will get hurt the most? Okay? The country that will get hurt the most, one of the countries that will get hurt the most, is a China, okay? Yes. So the the news that uh, I'll come to that, but the news that oh China right now are uh, weaponizing that that stick. They are selling U.S. Treasury, hurting the U.S. dollar. Okay. So uh, why would they want to do that? I'll come to that. Okay, I'll come to that. That's a very interesting observation. Okay. Um, the second thing is that some of you all may not know, but one of the one of the currency that is the most most difficult to trade in is actually the Chinese renminbi. Very, very, very difficult to trade. You know, um, I've been in, I'm in business as well, right? and some of my business are in China. Do you know how freaking difficult it is to trade in the Chinese renminbi? It's almost impossible. You know, almost. I mean, we all have to make move. For, if you want to move a renminbi around, it's very, very difficult. You know, yeah. So it is. It is, there's a lot of capital control uh, that China put onto uh, the Chinese renminbi. Why is it so? Because when you, when you internationalize your currency, okay, you lose control over a lot of your economy. And most importantly, your currency gets, your currency gets, uh, gets, becomes vulnerable to speculative attacks. So uh, if your currency is, uh, is internationalized uh, then, and if the value, uh, if the value uh, is not substantiated, then uh, people like George Sor Soros will come and uh, speculative attack the currency. That happens. Uh, that happens uh, to England. That happens to Asia financial crisis, right? That happened to Malaysia and uh, to uh, to to Indonesia as well. So that I don't think China will want to ever. Uh, put themselves in such a position, right? So, they will control. They will. They have. They have been controlling, and they will continue to control. One very interesting phenomenon right now is that there's a lot of rich China Chinese trying to get out of uh, China. So, without capital control, you know, the fly out of China is going to be tremendous. You know, so therefore, the Chinese uh, control of the Chinese renminbi will make will make it nearly impossible for the Chinese currency to be uh, to be internationalized. And if they let go of it, you know, they're gonna lose control of it, a lot of control, and they will hurt more. So so how the hell are they gonna trade with Brazil, with Russia, and all these countries uh, in Renminbi when they have so much capital control? So basically, most of the Chinese economies analyze it this way, okay? There's actually very little flow of currency actually going left and right between uh, these countries, okay? Some, not all. So, I think the, uh, the general direction of agree the agreement from what I understand from a Chinese economist is this. Okay? Let me ask you first, okay? Look at the Chinese economy right now. There's so many uh, China, 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 Chinese, uh, they are unemployed right now. The economy is in uh, trouble. The real estate market is a, is a total collapse, obviously. Do you really want to hold renminbi right now? Do you really want to hold renminbi right now? It, you know, you're not going to hold renminbi. So, if I trade, you know, I give a, a very a real example. You know, a lot of countries were under this scheme called Itailu, One Belt, One Road. So, China, Chinese government lend a lot of money to all these developing countries to develop the infrastructure for this project called Itailu. And once they receive the renminbi, what do they happen? They quickly convert them into US dollar. Yeah, okay, so nobody wants to hold the renminbi. 
because running pee has risk, okay? So I ask you, uh, okay, do that whole running pee right now. If I tell you right now that the economy is in trouble, nobody's gonna do it, right? Now, then Russia, Brazil, and all these countries, they're not stupid as well. They also don't dare to hold too much RMB. So how the trade is going to likely going to happen? Listen carefully, okay? First of all, we need to understand why the hell all these countries want to move away from the US dollar. Okay? Uh, so there are two reasons. Number one, for China and for Russia and all this, it's a defensive move. You know? In Chinese, we call it 自保, self-preservation. They don't have choice. You look at Russia. Russia is under tremendous sanction. They don't have US dollar anymore, right? And and in order for them to survive, them to survive, you know, they have to try to, to trade in the rubles or with another friendly currency. So they don't have a choice, okay? So uh, for the Chinese, they saw what happened to Russia. They say, hey, if it can happen to Russia, can it happen to me? Our good, our our my number one uh, enemy right now is uh, U.S. You know, U.S. can weaponize the U.S. dollar against me. You know, so therefore, what did the Ch what did the Chinese do? The Chinese uh, say we need to find a way to self preserve, at least with our key trading partners, so that one day if the U.S. were to weaponize the U.S. dollar against me, I'm st I will still survive. So what do they do? They did all this bilateral agreement. So they are very careful not to suffer the same fate as the Russian. Do you, have you heard of the SWIFT system? The SWIFT system is a system... Oh shit, there's so much cars. The, the SWIFT system is a system that, uh, that, that allows you to trade, uh, transfer money. And essentially, uh, the Russian got kicked out of the SWIFT system. Now, supposing one day, Taiwan proclaimed independence. China is going to take over Russia, uh, Taiwan by force, for sure, 100%. In that day, what happened? Of course, there'll be global calamity and turbulence. But whatever happened to Russia right now will happen to China in the eventuality. So China will be under sanction. They'll be kicked out of SWIFT system and all this. So China have no choice but to zipao, right? to self-preserve. And what do they do? Chinese have this phrase, uh, Wei Yu Chomo. Today I'm going to use a lot of Chinese phrase because I listen to a hell of Chinese, uh, a hell of Chinese uh, economies over the last uh, few days. So they have no choice, but before the rain comes, and shit, there's the thunder sounding right now. Before the rain comes, they better prepare first. So they move into bilateral agreements with all these trading partners so that they, in the event that they'll kick out the Swiss system, they can survive. Hey, by the way, why so few people give a like? Uh? Please, please give a like. This is a very heavy topic. I spent a lot of time researching, you know, okay? So that is the first reason. So self-preservation is a defensive move. Then the second reason why uh, they, uh, they, they are moving away from US dollar is a very practical, simple reason. Everybody, the minute I see you understand. What do you think is the second reason? Okay, what is the second reason? The second main reason is they don't have US dollar anymore. Rather not, the, they don't have much US dollar already. Yes. Why don't they have much US dollar, right? Russia running a US dollar is because of the world sanction. They just don't have US dollar trade anymore. They, they don't have euros, right? So the second re the reason why China is moving away from the US dollar is simply because they don't have US dollar as much as before. How do you get US dollar? Well, simple. You know, I'm a Chinese exporter. I'm a Chinese exporter. I make uh, equipment. I sell to Chinese. Uh, so I sell to uh, US companies or US market. I earn US dollar, right? So that's how we get foreign reserve. The, the Chinese trade surplus with US has fallen tremendously. So they have used up quite a lot of the US dollar. So they are running out of US dollar. Someone mentioned it just now, the, someone mentioned it just now, the, the Chinese are selling down the US treasury. Do you realize that the US treasury they're selling right now is at a time when interest rate is one of the highest, which means that when the interest rate goes up, the bond prices goes down. They bought those treasury at times where interest rate was shit low, which means the bond price was very high. You think the Chinese are idiots? 
that they want to sell the US Treasury when the value is so low? You think they're dumb? Chinese are one of the best uh, money makers of the world, you know? Why do they do that? Because they're running out of US dollar. As simple as that. So therefore, if I'm running out of US dollar, I can't trade in US dollar. So again, it's defensive and self-preservation. So therefore, I went, I go ahead now to sign all this bilateral agreement. Come, I, you don't have US dollar, I don't have US dollar. US dollar is so freaking expensive, okay? And I know, and the third reason why US dollar is so low uh, right now in, uh, in some of these countries is because the US interest rate gone up, a hell lot of US dollar pull out and gone and take flight back into uh, US. So a lot of uh, countries running out of US dollar. So then they have no choice. They can figure out an alternative. Then that's why all this arrangement comes in. Okay, so you understand all this? Now this uh, this is a very interesting observation. Uh, this is a very interesting observation uh, that is happening. Now, but the Chinese currency is not being traded. It's not internationalized. Everybody please give a like, okay? The Chinese currency is not internationalized. So when, when I... When I uh, do trade, nah, so my the currency is gonna flow left and right, you know. How am I gonna get? How am I gonna get the US, the Chinese renminbi? Well, actually, in most of case, you know, the it is a uh, when they sign the agreement, it's not just oh, you know, you take my you take my uh, renminbi and that's it. It's a basket of deals that's being signed. Okay, so the deals are usually a basket. So basically. The country say, okay, I make a lot of renminbi from you, but I will use that renminbi and hire Chinese uh, construction company to come to my country and develop my infrastructure. The China Chinese are incredible builders. How many of HDB right now are built by Singapore Chinese uh, by China Chinese uh, China Chinese company? Do you know? Have you seen Tengah? Uh, HDB estate, how many of them are built by Chinese developers? Hell of them, hell of them. The China Chinese, why why is there so many Chinese uh, construction company and developers building bridges, ports, airport, infrastructure roads in Africa, in developing countries? Why? There's a very simple reason. China infrastructure development has gone down tremendously, so they have a hell of excesses of supply of this, uh, these capabilities so therefore they're exporting these capabilities as a result okay so when when China signed these deals to deal uh, in renminbi they have this kind of arrangement yes okay we will trade with you I you know I pay you uh, I pay you renminbi but make sure you spend them back on my companies to build your infrastructure so it's a basket of deal, okay? So as a result, it's more like a contra deal. There's no real flow of money. Do you realize that? Yeah, you know, I, I spent $10 on you. Basically, you spent $10 back on me. And then we very giddy. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I try not to uh, try not do it, okay? So therefore, therefore, as a result, the Chinese... Uh, the Chinese uh, renminbi didn't really flow out. It's just a lot of contra deals. Yes, they mean some currency, currency go out. The details are not available yet. So, so, uh, so basically, uh, that's uh, that's how the that's how the arrangements are made right now. Now let's uh, take a step uh, forward and take a look. What will happen? Okay, in order to be a world reserve currency, in order for a world reserve currency. You got to be a country that is strong economically, politically, and uh, militarily, okay? You got to be strong. You got to be safe. You got to be a you got to be a, a country that that your assets will be safe and you got to be internationalized, okay? And uh, when there's a you know when there's any crisis there must be a flight to safety. Which country can meet this criteria? The closest you can get is the euro the closest again is the euro not the renminbi the renminbi nobody dare to hold it now for a long term okay so therefore it has failed in many many criterias 
uh, to be an international currency. So not in my lifetime will I see the US dollar being overtaken by by the Chinese uh, renminbi. I don't think that will happen, okay? Now, would there be some downward pressure on the US dollar as the demand goes down whatsoever? Maybe, okay, maybe. But the cap these news, when they're out, the capital market, the, the, the forex market didn't reflect any fear at all. Right? Nobody believes, uh, nobody in the forex market believed that the US dollar will be dethroned. So, so in a nutshell, in a nutshell, if really, okay, if really the US dollar will be will be replaced, then we have a serious issue. I have a lot of S&P 500, NASDAQ, uh, and a lot of US stock, you know. <laughs> uh, all this will crash, you know, in, uh, in Singapore value. But no, that won't happen, right? That won't happen, uh, at least in my opinion, uh, in my lifetime, okay? Now, can I be wrong? Yeah, anything can happen, but not, not if it, it cannot be replaced, but will it really have, you know, when all this news comes out and in a big way, will it have, uh, sorry, uh, will it have depreciate, some depreciation of the US dollar? Maybe, possible, maybe. But I think, uh, I don't think the effect is going to be that strong, okay? So there could be some volatility, there could be some uh, depreciation, but I don't think uh, that would be uh, that would be a big impact. Okay, so uh, in a nutshell, let me just wrap up. Okay, the move of the Chinese uh, to establish bilateral agreements to trade in the renminbi is a defensive and a bopian. It's a no choice move. They have to do it. Right? Just no, don't, they don't have a choice. Right? It's a it's really a self preservation move. I don't think they have an intention and, and they also don't think that they will ever replace the US dollar um, uh, in, the, in the long run, okay? Uh, so, now would there be, could there be short-term volatility in the currency market? Yes, when especially a lot of misinterpretation, uh, all this. So I, I think in the long run, uh, we'll still be safe uh, in the next, uh, I would say in the next 10 to 20 years, okay? so. Yeah, so I, I don't think uh, that is a, 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 a big concern. But in the short run, you know, in, sorry, in the, could, could that be, you know, the US dollar, could it gradually go down, you know? Yeah, when I remember maybe 20 years ago, it was 1.7 to 1 sing dollar, now it's uh, 1.33 to 1 sing dollar. But partially that is also the strength of the sing dollar. The sing dollar has gone up and uh, it's not really a fault of the US dollar going down. Uh, when I was in US about 10 years ago, it was 1.22. Yeah, now it's 1.33. It has gone up instead, right? Okay. So, uh, my analysis is that um, this is probably not a not a black swan event that will happen. And I think uh, we can focus our... I'll focus my time on other things, okay? Yes. All right, good. Okay. So, uh, let's take some questions right now, okay? Let's take some questions right now. Okay, you know, I'll take some questions. I got to take off my spectacles. Okay, uh, any comments and questions right now? Mm, Mr. Lu, PM Lee in China last week. Yes, I saw that. Uh, Sing dollar is a limited stock. Yeah, Sing Singapore dollar will never become a international currency. Yeah, yeah, not in a, not in a, not in, not in my lifetime. Okay, yes. Uh, any opinion of Chinese application to join the CPTPP? No, I'm not uh, familiar with the topic, so uh, I'm, I'm going to reserve my comment on that. What does it mean for people investing in long-term S&P 500? They're all in US dollars. As I said just now, uh, I don't think there will be. A, there, I don't think there will be a long. Imp uh, I don't think there will be a big impact. Okay. Yeah, but that's just my opinion, right? Could I be wrong? Yeah, but I don't think I'm that wrong. Yeah. Uh, other comments? Okay, I'm gonna read. Mm. Okay, uh, you can see US dollar is struggling to keep their control with the, by going sanctions to China, but okay. Yep. Chinese stocks how? Ah! I will keep, I personally will keep myself 10 foot pole away from Chinese stocks okay Chinese stocks I just it could it go up yes but it's too volatile you cannot predict it's just pure gambling uh. I would treat uh, Chinese stocks as a uh, buying total 
Okay, I wish I don't. Uh, could the yen be on par US dollar in future if this go on by the not in a when you say on par means what? On par as in like the amount of people using the yuan for international currency, not a chance. Not a chance, okay? Uh, yeah, I can uh, share some of the list of names if you are uh, to, you know, YouTube channels uh, you can watch. Taking such a walk every day, will it affect your knee in the future? Uh, I don't know about future. I think walks are not as damaging as uh, running. What will happen to Sing Dollar if it really happened? Uh, Sing Dollar is heavily linked with the US Dollar, not in entirety, so Sing Dollar will have, a, will have an impact. Okay, um, Hang Seng Index went up 33% from 2022 bottom, got some profit taking. Okay, yeah, but how much has it gone down? <laughs> you want the kind of speculative play? That's just plain gambling. Lah. Uh, some people, the gamblers, in gambling means some people win, some people lose. I don't like that kind of investment. Okay. All right, cool. Okay. US banks are still underwater, but US stocks go up. Uh, so what do you mean by US banks are underwater? Will the US default on their debt? Do you realize that the debt is denominated in US dollar? And the US can have suka suka print US dollar. So it's very difficult for them to default on their debt. Yeah. You, you can't, you know, if I... If I issue uh, Lu Cheng Chuan debt, uh, but I can print uh, Lu Cheng Chuan currency in is the denominated in Cheng, Lu Cheng Chuan's currency, I will never go broke. Uh. Okay, yes. Uh, okay, all right. Okay, good. Now, uh, what's your view on the current impact of chip ban from US? Ah, just a full big move uh, of US uh, against China, and maybe against Russia as well. Okay. They, use, they need to ingre, increase their debt ceiling. Now, that can be a next Black Swan event in June. But I don't think there's any other way to go. Uh, what will you do to hedge? Uh, I don't do much hedging, but I I usually take uh, treasuries against uh, uh, equities uh, to, to hedge against each, each other. Uh, US? What? US? Wait up. Uh. Sorry, guys. US banks regional are are mostly insolvent if liquidated. Why will still go up? I don't think they are insolvent. Some, a few of them are, but I think majority are not. And uh, the the Fed have came out uh, to support them. So I don't think that will happen. Yeah, so that's why, that's why the whole market is now very optimistic. How come US dollar can keep printing dollars? Why can't they? Because everybody is using it. That's what the power of being an international uh, uh, world reserve currency, okay? Yes. Yep. Okay. So um, yeah. So I think that's the that's the main thing that's happening in uh, in the main thing is happening in the world right now. So uh, so I think this matter, if really the Chinese renminbi is going to be internationalized, then we're going to be in big trouble. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lu, have you switched from Amandi uh, to? Switch on D from uh, S&P 500. I will just say this, okay? Is there a rush to convert to a Monday? And everybody is writing to me, uh, Mr. Lu, uh, Endowers is now, uh, Endowers is right now, you know, selling a Monday uh, for OA. Shall we all convert? Is there, a, is there a rush? Why is there a rush to do it, right? No rush, take your time, slowly. slowly. So I'm gonna invite uh, the chairman of Endowers or, or the CEO of Endowers to come and give a talk to our channel, then we uh, join, we jointly figure this out together, shall we? Yeah, okay. Uh, what's it? Look convincing. It's time for a slice of life, okay. Yeah, my side is going to rain, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, um, so okay, uh, with this, uh, yeah, there's a shitload of cars are walking on the road. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, uh, so no last question on this? All right, cool. Okay, yes, okay. So, okay, um, will you be sharing the Chinese YouTube channel? Uh, you know, email me, uh, lucengchuan at gmail.com, I can send you one or two of them, okay? Yeah, okay, so, um, 
Okay, so uh, with this, uh, you know, I will be ending my walk uh, soon. Uh, I'll just say that uh, yesterday, uh, two days ago, something interesting happened. My, and this is uh, the slice of life, okay? Uh, sorry, me, let me answer the last question from Douglas. While well, money supply has been decreasing since interest rate rise, uh, last two weeks banking crisis saw money supply increase by 3 billion. US dollar is still reputable. Okay? The question is this what alternative do you have? What alternative do you have? Okay? I think the current banking crisis uh, is nothing compared to the 2008 financial crisis. So, uh, I think in scale is uh, very small. And I think the whole sh uh, stock market has struck off the whole thing already. Okay? Yep. Okay, so anyway, um, I just want to say something um, that, uh, so uh, a bit of a slice of life. Uh, so uh, two days ago, my daughter, uh, you know, was uh, in Spain, yeah, and uh, she got pickpocketed, okay, pickpocketed, uh, and her iPhone was being, uh, was being pick, pickpocketed, um, and, and I think, uh, it's something that I want everybody to know that Europe is actually very dangerous, okay? Actually very, very dangerous. Uh, so, what I'm most impressed is that she actually, uh, first of all, you know, actually first uh, uh, informed us through, lucky she's with a friend, so at least she got some contact. Uh, she actually handled the situation very well, you know? Uh, she, she, she actually, you know, quickly Borrow, uh, when you lose uh, your when you lose your phone, what are the first few things you need to do, right? You need to quickly terminate uh, all your find a way to. Uh, she called me and uh, asked me to help her because uh, she's holding a supplementary card for me. So uh, she terminated her. She asked me to terminate her, her credit card because uh, you know your iPhone now has iPhone uh, wallet, Apple wallet, and uh, she quickly uh, take some effort to. Uh, quickly uh, terminate all her social media accounts just in case someone uh, steals it and things like that. Uh, and very importantly is find, use this, find my iPhone, uh, log in and quickly uh, lock down the phone. That basically, if I understand that once the phone is being locked down, it becomes scrap metal, okay? Um, you can't use the phone anymore. So she does, uh, she did all these things which I thought is very good. Uh, so. So I, I think she handled it and she was uh, not panicky. Uh, she could uh, handle it, you know. And luckily she didn't bring her wallet out. She didn't bring a handbag out. So it might be uh, something else to be stolen. So uh, I'm pretty uh, happy that she handled this. And I now look back simply because she, <laughs> we as parents uh, who travel a lot in Europe encounter this quite a lot. Okay, I've been, my wife and I have been pickpocketed, uh, lost things a few times. So she learned from me and said, oh, you know, <laughs> okay, this thing happened now to me, right? She could react on it. So a lot of times as we parents uh, go through some, some life crisis or life uh, lessons, please share with your children so that when it happens to your children, they know how to react. Yeah, how to react. Okay. Um, once they know, once they, once they learn from you, that uh, learn from you and see with their eyes uh, how this thing is done, uh, when it happened to them, they know how to react, right? When we face uh, certain life lessons, be sure to share with your, your kids. I spend a lot of time sharing uh, lessons, sharing lessons of my life uh, with my children. Yeah, so I usually when I'm with them or when I call them, I'll just share with them. Oh no, Papa, Mama, or Papa met this situation, this issue. This is how we handle it. Okay. It was properly handled. No, it wasn't bad, well handled. It was it could be better handled anyway. So these are things I share a lot, and uh, I find that now that as they grow up, okay, and those things that I share with them is when they are young. Now as they grow up, wow, you no, know, they, they, uh, they, they could now handle it, right? So, be sure to share a lot of your life lessons with your children, so that uh, you know when when that, those things happen to them, uh, uh, they know, right? So a lot of communication uh, is important. So anyway, right now she has, uh, I don't know how to say this, but uh, So uh, so she, you know, quickly go and get a new iPhone. Uh, she got some travel insurance uh, that will cover part of the cost. 
uh, and you know, uh, we we got to send a SIM card from Singtel uh, to her and things like that to get her a number. Anyway, alright, cool, okay? So uh, thanks uh, for joining me. Uh, I hope that um, you have a great Sunday night uh, with your family. And I hope this uh, little sharing uh, of what's happening in the US dollar and Chinese yuan uh, will put things in perspective, okay? Giving you a balanced picture, okay? Cool? Alright, with this, uh, okay, with this, have a uh, good Sunday night and I'll see you uh, next time, okay? Next time, uh, probably tomorrow or the day after, okay? Good night, everybody, okay? Good night. Good night, everybody. Okay, good night.